Hey everyone, welcome to Cover Creations. My name is Gareth and this is my little corner of the internet, playing with my food. Today I'm going to be doing a wild mushroom risotto. Now it's kind of an autumnal dish, but here in the UK at the moment it's July and I'm wearing a jumper. You know, it, it's that kind of weather, so it kind of fits with what we've got at the moment. But then again, you know, in a month or two's time when things start to calm down, this is a perfect kind of little dinner for two. It is wonderful. So we're going to start really, really easily. You're going to grab yourself a jug and you want 15 grams of porcini mushrooms. And those are the dried ones. And you're just going to pop them in there. Grab yourself some boiling water and then just fill that up to about half a litre. There we go. And then we're just going to set that aside. Now what that's going to do is slowly those mushrooms are going to soak up some of that moisture. They're going to rehydrate themselves. But what it's also going to do is give you this beautiful kind of liquid, huge mushroom flavour to it. And that's just going to add another layer. So we're going to use that as our stock. Maybe pep it up a bit with a stock cube, but keep that water. It's going to be really, really nice for this. Okay, so while those are going, you know, they just you can see the water starts to get deeper and deeper in colour. Really, really cool. You just want to do a few little things to get ready for cooking this. So you're going to want thyme. And you're going to want about two tablespoons worth of thyme leaves. So you want to grab yourself some thyme, probably about half a pack that you'd get in a supermarket. Just strip those leaves off and get that there. I've done it earlier so that you don't have to sit there watching me forever. Um, and then we've got a couple of other bits. So you're going to start two cloves of garlic. You're just going to want to chop these up nice and small. There we go. So that's my garlic done. Ooh. Just push that to one side. And then grab yourself an onion. And you're going to want one small onion or half a large one for this. And you want to chop it down really quite small. It's a nice dice. So when you think of a grain of rice, for example, you don't want it too much bigger because otherwise you're going to have these like dominant large lumps of onion. And it's meant to almost disappear in there. So we can chop that down, dice that up. Okay, so that's the onion and garlic done. So just gonna put that on a little plate, just to give ourselves a bit more room. So there's that, nicely done. Now we can turn our attention to the mushrooms. So I've got a tray here, 200 grams of kind of mixed wild mushrooms. You don't have to use wild, you don't have to use mixed. You know, you can just do this with chestnut mushrooms if you want, They're, it'll still be delicious. I just like that kind of idea of the different flavours and different textures of the mushrooms in it. That really kind of gives it a bit more interest. So I've got some really odd looking ones in here, but uh, we'll get those done and we'll just chop them up kind of roughly. We don't need to go too crazy with these. There we go, they're all done. Just so we got no really kind of giant big bits, but nice bits that are just gonna fit nice and easy in the mouth. Okay, so now they're done, we can turn our attention to those porcini. You're just gonna grab yourself some kitchen towel, pop that on your board, and then you're gonna lift out when you can find a spoon. Lift out those porcini onto here and just give them a bit of a drain because you don't want too much wetness when you try and chop it up. You'll end up taking your fingers off. So we're going to pop those out. Most of them should be floating. Just pop them on that towel. Okay, so that's pretty much all of the mushrooms out there. And then we're just going to wrap them up a bit. Just give them a squeeze back in there because that juice is just full of flavour and we don't want to waste it. There we go. And while you were digging around, you'll probably find that you'll feel like these little grit bits at the bottom, which you're always going to get a bit of that with the porcini. You know, some of the really expensive ones you might not get as much, but yeah, normally there's a little bit of grit. So we'll show you, well, I'll show you how to deal with that in a sec. But all you're going to do then, grab your porcini, you want to dice these up really quite small, 
because it just spreads that flavor all throughout the dish, which really makes a huge difference because these things are so highly flavored. Great, so we're almost done there. That's our mushrooms. You've got our onions and our garlic. Our thyme's already picked. And now we've got this beautiful stock. And what you're gonna to need to do to get rid of any of that grit is just to grab yourself another jug or a bowl. If you've got yourself a really fine sieve, that's really gonna help as well. Otherwise, what you can do is just line one, which I'll do now, with another bit of kitchen towel. And you can just pour it through the middle there. And that'll keep all of the grit in. I mean, you don't get any in your final dish. So you just pour that into another jug. Trying to leave a little bit in the bottom. And that bit you'll see, there's tons of, tons of tiny little bits like miniature grains of sand in there. So we just let that drain through. And while that's draining, just wanna say, if you're enjoying these videos, wonderful, if you think, drop us a subscribe or a like to the video, really, really help me out. Let me get kind of these videos out, showing to loads more people. So if you could consider that, it'd be fabulous. And there we go. That can pop back in there, out of the way. And then we've got our stock here. And all we're gonna add is a kind of vegetable stock pot or a little stock cube. Just gonna add an extra layer of flavor on top then. Just gonna really, yeah, kind of zing everything up a bit. So if you can get into your stock pot, don't do this at home kids, just pop that in there and give it a stir around. Don't worry because that's kind of a little bit cooled down now, it's not gonna dissolve as well as it would in boiling water, but it doesn't really matter because the whole thing is gonna go into your risotto and be heated anyway. So it's gonna gradually kind of break down anyway. So just give that a zzz up break it up a little bit and then the base of your stock's all done there we go nicely broken down so that's it that's all your main ingredients for now we can now head over to the hob start putting it all together okay so we've got all our stuff all there nice and ready much much easier doing it like that and then we're just going to start this off got the pan on the heat I'm just going to add a little knob of butter about 15 grams, just pop some in there. And then you're just gonna add a small tablespoon or so of olive oil. And what that's gonna do is just stop that butter kind of going sort of nut brown. Um, when, you know, for some things, especially if you're doing fish or something like that, it's lovely to have that. For this, we just wanna kind of use it as a base to put that kind of slightly dairy feel into this. So you're just gonna let that melt down and then Grab your onions and pop them in. We're just gonna sweat those down just for about five minutes so they're nice and soft. Okay, they're softening up nicely now, so we're just gonna add that garlic in. Gave me time not just to soften them up, sort out the lighting problem you probably all spotted a minute ago with it going dark light, dark light. Nothing wrong with a good bit of old curtain shoved over the door. So we're gonna keep that just going now for another three minutes. Just let it kind of soften down. It's great, what I love about risottos, it's kind of, you're cooking it for a while, but it's all quite bitty. Just pot it in, leave it for a bit, pop some bits in, leave it for a bit. It's just a nice and relaxing meal. So let those soften, back in a sec. Brilliant, so garlic's now softened nicely. Time for the mushrooms. So you're just gonna pop all of your mixed mushrooms or your chestnut mushrooms or your wild mushrooms or whatever you've gone for. And then those porcini in there. And you're just gonna kind of fry those off a bit for about five minutes or so. So they really kind of start to soften and cook down. Okay, so we've got this glorious kind of mushroom mash at the bottom now. Really, really smells beautiful in here. Now we're gonna add in that thyme. You just wanna pop it all in Reserve, maybe a little bit, just to give it a nice little sprinkle at the end, make it look very chefy. So we're just gonna pop most of the thyme in there, like so. And then a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. So, pop some salt in. And a 
good few grinds of pepper. Lovely. Give that a quick mix. Smell the thyme's really good already. It's just kind of instantly hits you. And thyme and mushrooms, just unbeatable. So now you've got that, rice. So you're gonna use 170 grams of risotto rice. So I'm using like an Arborio one. There are a couple of others out there. We're just gonna pop that in. Give that a really good mix around. And then you're gonna fry that for about two minutes. And what you'll notice is the rice when you put it in, very white. Once you've kind of got a bit of that kind of mixture all over it and a bit of the butter and the oils, give it a good fry and it will start on the edges to start to go translucent. And that's when you know you've kind of cooked it enough. You can start adding the wet ingredients. Okay, that's great. So my rice now, little translucent edges to it. I'll try and shove a picture up, but what with YouTube compression and stuff, I'm not entirely sure whether you're going to be able to see it. You'll have to trust me, two minutes should do it. Don't worry if it's not looking exactly like you want, it's not going to harm the dish. So now, wine. You're going to want about 125 ml, so a small glass of white wine. So we're just going to pop that in there. That's probably about right. A little bit more for luck. And then we're just going to bubble that down until it's reduced by half at least. Yeah, you almost don't want to see it anymore. You want to kind of get it nice and thick. Lovely. So it's kind of, the only way I can really describe it, it's now like a goop at the bottom. And the easiest way is like if you drag your spoon, it will kind of ease back, it will ooze back in, it won't flow. And that's where you want that wine. And now your stock that you made earlier. So give it a bit of a whizz up and then pour about a third of it in. Maybe just more than a third. And what we're gonna do, same way you would normally do any kind of risotto, we're just gonna kind of boil it down a bit, you know, keep on a really low simmer, and let it kind of all get absorbed till you get it down to that kind of goop level again. And then pour in some more stock, pour in some more stock each time until your rice is pretty much cooked. Now, one thing I am gonna do, which uh, the TV chefs don't do, is I'm gonna put a lid on it, which is not traditional probably, that's what we're all told. But the last time I made a risotto on this channel, first comment was from a lovely Italian family who ran a risotto rice place in Italy, and they were fine with it. So I'm gonna keep doing it this way, because it just saves me a bit of time. Not just time, it saves me making two loads of stock, because the rest has bubbled off completely. So we're just gonna keep the lid on, let that go. Every now and again, pop in, stir it about, pop the lid back on until the rice is basically almost done. So it's just sort of al dente, as they will call it. You know, you're thinking, mm, maybe it needs one minute or two minutes more. At that point, that's when we come back. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, for this last bit, just got the lid off. It's almost there. You can see it's got that same kind of gloopiness we had at the beginning. You know, drag the spoon and you can see the stuff kind of just oozing back. So that is pretty much done. So all we need to do now is quickly taste it, make sure the rice is pretty good. At this point you should think it's completely edible. I could get given a risotto like this and I would enjoy it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you still get each grain. That's the whole thing for me with like al dente. I spent some time in Rome, I had a risotto there, it was awful. It wasn't al dente, it was just not cooked. Um, but I think I was probably in the wrong part of Rome in one of those kind of tourist trap places. Um, had one somewhere else, absolutely perfect. So just make sure it's right for you. you don't worry about, you know, oh, it's gotta be this or it's gotta be that. Just think, do I wanna eat this? So. That's pretty much done. And it's gonna soak up a little bit more, but we're gonna do that in a way that really kind of elevates a risotto. And for me, this is like the one tip I'll always have, is just turn it off and then grab yourself about 30 grams of Parmesan cheese, all grated up, pop that in, 
like so and then give it a good mix because that parmesan is going to add a little bit of saltiness as well it's going to lighten it slightly and you're really going to get some lovely lovely flavors from that and then keeping that off the heat just lid on leave that for five minutes just doing nothing what that's going to do is that's going to soak up some of that remaining juice it's going to allow the parmesan to kind of melt down into it you're just going to get something that comes out so much more kind of together you know so it's the one tip i would have for any risotto is that last five minutes just leave it let it rest like a really good steak you know okay so there we go five minutes later and it's just got rid of all of the last of that kind of juice that was in there it's all really bound together and you've just got this glorious kind of thick gloop to it which sounds particularly unappetizing when you say it like that but it is gorgeous and all that's left to do now is just kind of plate it up so we can just grab a lovely bit pop that on our very nice plate that someone bought me and of course we drip a bit over the edge so pop that off mm. I mean that's so delicious it kind of almost tastes it's got like this forest floor kind of thing to it it's so so earthy but absolutely fabulous so all we can do now pop a little bit of that thyme over the top stuff we got left and there we have it my wild mushroom risotto i absolutely adore this one and it's got such an intense flavor that anyone's going to be pretty happy with it so there you go my wild mushroom risotto i hope you give it a go i hope you enjoy it and i'll catch you next time cheers